Welcome back to the Pearlworks channel. I like to get started by rough cutting my lumber, and I like to get everything cut down to an 87 degree angle, and the reason for that is I can't cut straight. Because I have a small joiner, I have to be careful when joining boards that have a bow in it, and so what I like to do is run one end of the board over for about six to seven inches, flip it around and do the same thing with the other end, and this gets the face roughly in the same plane before I can make a full pass over the joiner. I have another fancy AutoCAD drawing for you guys. This is a little bit of a different project for me, but it was still kind of fun. It's called a Pickler Triangle, or a Pikler Triangle. It's a climbing structure for infants, and it's basically just an A-frame ladder for them to climb up and down and get their bearings straight. There's a bunch of attachments you can make for it, like ramps and things like that. There's three basic parts to it. You have these rails, this one on the left and this one on the right. You have this triangle, which is the side bracing. And then you have the dowels, which act as the steps. And if we zoom in a little bit, these are three screws that will attach the side panel to the long rail. But this one right here is the key to the whole thing. This is going to allow the short rail to hinge back and forth. And that'll just make it easier to store when it's not being used. These two holes here will allow a star knobbed bolt to engage with a threaded insert in the short rail and that'll lock it into place. Before I head over to the drill press I wanted to mark all of my holes and I made sure to clamp my pieces together that way the holes for each rung would be aligned perfectly. I'm going to be using one inch dowels for this project and so I'm just using a one inch Forstner bit here I drilled about a half inch deep and when I did my dry fit I realized that probably wasn't deep enough so I went back and drilled about another quarter to a half inch deeper and that made the rungs a lot more stable. The top rung of the short rail houses part of the connecting bolt hardware which allows the assembly to hinge back and forth. I'm making a couple counterbores here so that this portion of the hardware can sit recessed and not interfere with the dowel. I'm using a 1x8 to make the side panels for this structure which are going to be equilateral triangles and I'm just joining two pieces together to get a nice wide panel. I ripped the panel to about 10 inches wide because that's what the height of the triangle needs to be. I made my first cut with the miter gauge set to 30 degrees and then flipped it over and made the second cut. I'm using this vintage half circle template to draw a radius on the end of each of the rails and then I'll take it over the band saw and sander to get it cleaned up. This is part of that connecting bolt assembly that has to be installed into the 
upper rung of the short rail. It's not the most elegant solution to have this thing hidden, but it was what worked out when I was drawing it up. I put glue in each hole and then hammered the dowels in. This is a pretty critical step because you need both of these rails to be square and the same width. And so for this second one, I wasn't so much concerned with having all of the dowels fully seated as I was making sure that it was the same exact width as the previous one I glued up. These side panels are fixed to the longer rails. I use a little bit of glue and get them clamped down. Next I'll pre-drill for my screws and then attempt to use an Allen wrench. This bolt connects to the hidden nut that was installed earlier, and now the whole assembly can hinge. Ta-da! Um, wait. Ta-da! I used one of the holes in these side panels to mark where this threaded insert needed to be installed. I'm using a Forstner bit to get the hole started because it has the brad point. But I finished it off with the twist bit because I noticed that the threaded insert went into those holes a little bit better when I was testing them out. I wanted to make sure that I use a food safe finish because babies chew on stuff. And so the first coat here is a, just a normal mineral oil. And after this dried, I used a wax oil mixture. That's about it. Thanks for watching.